Hey, y'all, and thank y'all for tuning in. Now, if this is your first time, welcome. Now, if you've been here before, welcome back. Y'all, I am truly excited. That's because we have something special for you on this holiday season, y'all. Instead of just doing a turkey or frying up a bird, y'all, we really gonna fry up a bird. I know you didn't have fried chicken before, but have you had the whole bird look like this? The whole chicken fried up before your very eyes, y'all. And that's what it's all about, y'all. This is the ultimate pre-holiday feast. And on this channel, the food is always the star. Now, we got the greens going, y'all. Greens sitting in the sink, soaking. I let these greens soak for about 45 minutes, y'all. Apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, and some salt. I rinsed them. And then we let them soak, y'all. And after that, then we rinsed them again. But in the meantime, while they soaking, we have this bacon. We're going to lay this bacon out on this sheet tray, y'all. We're going to get the bacon laid out right. Now that we got the bacon on the sheet tray, take a look at this bird, y'all. This bird's not too big. Nice and right, y'all. Okay, this is something you can cook with at home. I want to give you the confidence to be able to fry up this whole bird the right way at home, y'all. All right? That's what we about to do here. Now, I'm rubbing down this bird in some butter, some melted butter. Yes, I am rubbing it down good. Rub down the whole bird. Rub down the internals. Now, make sure you take out the neck and all the innards, the gizzards, take the gizzards out too, y'all. Get all that out. Now, if you want them in there, leave them in there. If you want them in there, leave them in there, y'all. It, it ain't no harm, no foul, y'all. But take that skin, pull that skin back and get that butter underneath that skin. Get it all the way through that breast. Get it into the legs. Get it into the thighs. Get it in every crack. Get it in every crevice that you can. This is not a rush job, y'all. This is the deal all right because food is entertainment y'all and on this channel the food is always the star y'all and we have this better than bouillon that we're gonna go ahead and rub in here now we're gonna make sure we get this bouillon rubbed in here good it does not matter the brand of chicken base you use better than bouillon is simply a brand name the product is chicken base y'all and that's what it's all about, using chicken base. It does not matter the brand that you use. Chicken base is one of the top flavor agents that we use in restaurants. Chicken base can allow you to use less salt in your dish than what you were previously using before because chicken base contains a lot of salt, y'all, and a lot of flavor. Not just the chicken base. They have beef base and other bases out there, too. Now, we have to season up this bird, y'all. I'm using some Tony Saturated seasoning as the first foundation of the seasoning that we're putting on this bird. We're going to season up every part of it. That's the whole point. We want to season up everything. We don't want to over-season, but we want to season everything. It is totally okay to have some gaps in between those seasonings, okay? Because you're going to put more seasoning on it. Not just one type. You want a variety. I used Tony Satchery. I used garlic powder. I'm going to use some lemon pepper seasoning. Not too much lemon pepper, but I'm going to use some lemon pepper seasoning because I don't want that to take over this dish. It's the holiday season and I don't want no fried lemon pepper whole chicken. I just wanted a little bit of lemon pepper seasoning. Just a touch to where you really can't taste it. And Montreal chicken. This seasoning is phenomenal. I suggest you use Montreal chicken seasoning whenever you can. Don't overuse it. But it tastes good inside of mashed potatoes too as well. It tastes good inside of a dressing as well too. So we are going to use this Montreal chicken seasoning on this bird, y'all. And we must also keep in mind 
that what we do to one side, we're going to have to do to the other side. You can't just season one side. You want to be able to season the other side of it. But when you're going through this process, y'all, take your time. Don't rush. Allow the seasonings to soak in if you do have the time. Hopefully, you'll be able to put yourself in a position to where you have the time to do it. I do understand that some of us have families. I am a father myself. I am a husband myself. I do have a fully disabled child that is 24 hours, seven day a week care. So I really understand. So if you do have the time, let those seasonings sit in. Add the rest of whatever flavor agents you want. Cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, uh, whatever it is that you feel like you need. All right. You see what we're doing? We're making sure we're getting every part of the bird. That's the whole premise is make sure we cover it all up. We're not trying to add too much of one flavor, but it all needs to be covered up because we're going to let this still sit and let those flavor agents creep through the skin and down into the protein, y'all. OK, so that's the whole point of this. We're taking our time and we're making sure that we do it right. We're choosing whatever seasonings we want. This right here is also some paprika that I'm throwing on top. So we're getting some paprika in there too to add to that reddish hue. This is actually a Spanish paprika that I'm using on this dish right here, on this chicken right here. All right, y'all see how we're looking. We have to make sure what we have done to one side it gets done to the other side. And that's what it's all about, y'all. So we have the seasonings on our chicken. And it's looking mighty, mighty, mighty good right now. You can fry that up. But that's not how we frying today. Yeah, that's flour in front of you right there. Yes, it is. We got some flour. So we, when I say, when I say that we are frying this up, I mean we frying this up. We going to deep fry this whole bird, y'all. Mm-hmm. So what are we putting in there? We have some panko breadcrumbs we dropping in there. We dropping in some flavor agents in there. Some Montreal chicken seasoning in there. We dropping some Tony Saturé up in there. We dropping some onion powder, garlic powder in there too as well, y'all. So we want our flour and panko are mixed to have its own flavor too as well. We need that to have a flavor too. Don't make the mistake of just seasoning your breading or make the mistake of just seasoning your protein that you plan on breading. Go through all the way. Follow through. Make sure it's done right. Because if you're going to do something, y'all, Make sure you do it the way you really, truly want it done, the way you want it to taste. This way, you know it's done right. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm dropping this chicken right there into the flour. First things first, I'm dropping the chicken into the flour. Well, should I have put it in the egg wash first? Well, that's one way. You can you can do that. That's nothing wrong with that. I have no objections to doing that. No equivocations to doing that, y'all. But I feel, in my opinion, with this particular bird, this is my first time, y'all. I must say, this is my very first time frying a whole bird, okay? First time frying the whole bird. And I felt that it needed to be dropped and dredged into the flour and panko breadcrumb mix first before I put it into the egg wash. So this is why we're doing it this way. And you'll see how it turns out and why I did it that way too, y'all. Okay? So when you're doing this, you can do this right here at home on your kitchen counter. Just give yourself enough space Make sure you have a pan that's big enough, a pan that you would roast your, your turkey in. If you have a pan big enough to roast your turkey in, then you have the potentiality of frying up this bird whole. 
And if you have a pot that is big, a stock pot, a big stock pot, if you have a 20 gallon stock pot, then you have the potentiality to fry up this bird. Now, I fried this bird up inside my home. You can say, well, you're crazy, but I will show you all that when we get there. But right now, we taking our time because it's very important that you get this flower all over this bird. It's very important that you do because if you don't get this first layer of flower on this bird proper and you go to the egg wash, you're going to find out it's not going to stick right. It's not going to hold right. The breading will not adhere right. So go ahead and take your time. Make sure you have the whole bird covered up. Make sure you have enough flour and panko breadcrumbs. This is a two-pound bag of flour. Did I use all two pounds? No, I did not. I had excess because I understood the assignment. I understood that I had this whole bird in here and I needed to make sure I had enough flour for this process, y'all. All right, y'all. So now we at the egg wash. Now, what this is, the same pan that I seasoned and buttered the chicken in, that is what I put these eggs in. So you'll see all that butter and seasoning that stuck to this pan will get used. I'm using a ladle right now to scrape the edges off. And that's what I'm doing. It's more of a waste not, want not method than anything else. And you see all that seasoning that was on the bottom of that pan that was stuck to that pan is lifting off. It's getting mixed in. So now we know we seasoned our protein product. We rubbed it down in butter and in chicken base. Then we seasoned it, right? That's the first thing we did was rub our chicken down in butter base and season it. Then we had our flour and our panko breadcrumb, our dry breading mix. And we seasoned that, y'all. Our egg wash, that got seasoned. And you see, we let that chicken sit and we drop it right there into the flour. Press down on it, not too firm, but just press down on it. Find the areas that you feel need to be covered up. That's on the top because some of that egg wash will carry through if it's over halfway deep into the pan. Make sure you bread as much as you can. Get underneath it. Get that flour that's on the bottom. Bring it back up to the top. Make sure you cover every angle, every aspect. Right now, that's me getting the wings in between the wings, under the wing. Getting every part that I can get. Now I have the chicken rotated fully. So this is the side that sat down into the egg wash. So we have that side up top now. So we want to lift that bird and we want to reposition everything and sprinkle that flower right there on top of that bird in between those wings, the place where sometimes that breading doesn't want to hold on. You have to get everywhere. Take your time with this. Give yourself a day's notice if you want to do something like this. This project is really not that difficult because it is one whole bird. You don't have to bread of each piece. You're breading the whole bird. But we just want to be cautious. We want to take our time. And believe it or not, the oil is on right now. The oil is sitting about at level two on an electric stove. That's what it's sitting at, right on top of the stove at level two. Not too high, not too low. Why? Because the longer it sits at that level, the hotter the oil will be. And the closer I get 
to serving. Then I will cut the temperature of the oil up. So this way it can build slow and we don't burn it. All right, we're going through that process. We're making sure we have the other side breaded up right. Right? And egg washed up right. So now we have it sitting inside of our egg wash. We're going to lay out our flour so we can have enough room and enough flour towards the edge so we can get around all the sides too as well. That's very important is that we get every area of this chicken covered up. And the areas that it looks like I'm just kind of feeling around, it's not that I'm feeling around. What I'm doing is I'm getting my fingers underneath that flour to lift up more flour. And I'm placing that flour everywhere I can, everywhere I feel it needs to be coated. Any place I see that needs to be coated, I'm coating it. We want it breaded up right. We want it breaded up. We want it to stay, especially with this being our first time doing this, family. Family, this is our first time doing this together, y'all. Y'all with me? That's what I'm talking about. I appreciate y'all's support. I really, really do. We couldn't be here without y'all. And this is where we are. So we have to flip it. Now the side that was sitting down in the egg wash, that will be the side of attack now. We're breading the breasts. This is the part we're breading and where the neck area of the chicken is. We're breading up all that. We want to make sure we... We have no area left behind. That is so, so important when it comes to fried chicken. There have been many points in times to where we feel like, oh, the breading is right. We have enough breading on here. And yes, and then the breading doesn't hold. And that's what we don't want. And with this being our first time doing this family, that's what we don't want to see. We don't want to see it fail. No, we want the breading to hold. All right. So that's why we're being patient. And that's why we're doing this together. We go through the ups together and we'll go through the downs together. Family, if I fail, I'll let you know. If it doesn't work out, we'll let you know. But so far during this process, so good. So what do you plan on eating? For the holiday season do you plan on having your standard turkey do you plan on going outside of the box do you plan on having a cultural holiday meals or do you plan on just saying hey man i i, I don't care i'm just gonna eat whatever on that day now me as a chef having to work the restaurants and the hotels in years past i was always fixing these things at the restaurant but I still would come home and fix these meals with my wife, you know, and my family. And it, it would be a wonderful deal to be able to fix this with my wife and my family. You know, everybody's full and happy and having a good time. You know, you never take these moments for granted. No matter what you do for a profession, if you can bring that home and utilize those skills within your own house to improve things within your own home, then do it. If you're a mechanic and you know how to fix vehicles, then fix them. Y'all, now it's time to go ahead and get these grains going. Now, these are some mixed grains. We got some collards and we got some mustard, y'all. And we dropping them. First things first, though, we had butter, tomatoes, and onion in there. And notice, you didn't see no boiling water in there now, did you? I ain't put no boiling water in there at all no i did not no i did not i am sauteing these greens on high heat in the pot that i'm gonna be cooking these greens in y'all this is a green pot all right now i'm squeezing some lemon juice in the pot too as well so we have this on high heat it's working it's working it's working we're not gonna rush the process we're gonna saute these greens up a little bit you be like why well, these greens sticking no as you see no, they are not sticking. Part of the reason that they are not sticking is because I had the butter, I had some onions, and I had tomatoes in there. And I had that simmering. 
by us cooking the tomatoes and by us cooking the onions and reducing them and allowing all that water that's with inside of them to come on out, dropping those greens in there, allowing the water that's in the greens to come on out. That's sugar, y'all, I just put in there. Two tablespoons. That, within itself, produces a nice amount of liquid. All that water in the greens, all that water in the onions, the water in the tomatoes, all that produces a nice amount of liquid, believe it or not. Now, with that being said, I do add water into the greens, but I add the water into the greens after I let the greens do what they do without the water. We're going to drop some bacon fat in that thing too, y'all. All right, so that's some bacon fat we throwing in there too. And we're going to let all of that do what it does before we put our water. Now, take a look at it, y'all. Ain't no water. I ain't put no water in there. Now, you can see the liquid in there. If you take a gander, if you take a close look, y'all, you can see that in there. Okay? So, that does produce its own juice, y'all. But we still need to add some water when we get to that phase. So, we're adding in more flavor agents, as you saw. I threw some Old Bay up in there, too. Now, if you ask me, is there one standard way to cook greens? I'm going to tell you no, because I, I have too many clients that like greens in a variety of ways, y'all. And what I mean, is there one standard way to cook the greens? Hmm, I should word it like this. Is there one standard way to season the greens? For me... No, because I have many clients and they have many, many different palates. Notice I hadn't put any water in there. You see all that liquid, y'all. You see all that liquid coming out them greens there, y'all? That's why I added the water. Because all the liquid coming from the greens, y'all. And that's what we got. All right? All right, y'all. Now it's time to drop this bird. Now notice, we dropping this bird. The oil level in this pot, whether you know it or not, is not even halfway. We have to make sure that when we are frying our product, we have some sort of familiarity as to where the oil level will be. And we do not have to keep the oil on high. All right, let's be cautious because this is on an electric burner in our home and i suggest that if you are going to fry your food especially if you're going to fry a large amount of food use a pot that is much larger do not use a pot you feel is the right size use a pot that is larger and as a matter of fact i would suggest running an experiment Putting something inside of that pot you want to use that is about the same size, but fill that pot up with water. So that way you have a ideal of where your oil level should be. Again, this is not even halfway. The heat at which this oil is boiling at is around 290 degrees. The oil does rise in temperature. When I put this sheet tray, not even the lid for it because I couldn't find the lid at this moment in time, I put a sheet tray on top of it to cover it and leave it uncovered a quarter of the way. That was sped up a little bit, me taking the sheet tray off. So you can see the oil now is about 312 degrees though it may not look like it it is at 312 degrees and we are taking our time because it took it a while to get up to 312 degrees because i am cooking it on an electric stovetop 
This chicken took 45 minutes for it to cook thoroughly. Again, this chicken, fried chicken, took about 45 minutes to cook thoroughly all the way. And we are taking our time with this because this is the first go around, y'all. So I'm walking y'all through it just as I'm walking myself through it because I never even thought to fry up a whole chicken until I fried up a whole chicken, y'all. And here we are. So we want to take our time. We're going to put this sheet tray back over it. And now we ready to pull. We're sitting at 175 degrees, y'all. And you see, I'm pulling it off of my stove. Take a look at that there, y'all. I'm talking about, look at that, y'all. Have you ever seen anything in your life like that? Well, I never have. Woo-hoo. Look at that. Woo-wee. That look good there, y'all. We're talking about we got us a whole fried bird, y'all. Woo, look, look, look. A fried bird that is really Something, something. I'm talking about fried diet and let's lay it to the side, y'all. With some mashed potatoes and everything, whatever. Ooh, I don't even know, y'all. We're going to add it to the playlist. If there's something you feel like we miss, y'all, take a look at the setup. We got the greens. We got the mashed potatoes, cornbread, and the whole fried chicken, y'all. Let us know if you feel like it's something that we miss so we can add it to the playlist, y'all. We trying to be in your browser, in your up next section, y'all. Please be sure to like, comment, and and subscribe, y'all. Happy holiday season to you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays and everything else to you. And make this dish for your family. See y'all next time.